Morris had produced a material that appeared to have numerous applications. Military, industry, even space travel were all possibilities. Why, why have we not heard more of this, you know, so-called miraculous substance? It's a very different skill set, inventing a material, or in fact, accidentally inventing a material and building a business out of it. Those are, those are in a sense, two completely separate things. And um, I think he either couldn't do the second thing or he didn't have someone around whom he trusted to do the second thing. And so it became just a curiosity, this material, because it never, it may, it never made the leap into a commercial material. I think Morris was um, very, very bothered about um, knowledge leaking out. He wanted to own it. He, in fact, wanted Starlight to be his. Um, he was not happy with, in fact, giving over details of what might be in it. I think the potential was never realised because of this fundamental problem of how you bring Morris together with a business, or in fact any other person, so he felt comfortable explaining how it works. We never got to that situation that he was prepared to hand over the crown jewels. I haven't seen any money that Green has No, I've brought you. Okay, I like you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk to the attorneys and yeah. see what they have to do. But, you know, we've got to have the agreements in place. Yes. That, all, that. all we're saying really is that I'm protecting my material oh, okay. and you ain't going to pinch it. Mm -hmm. That's no, all. I, no, no, that's all it says. I know, really. exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's right. He was also reluctant to tell people what was actually in Starlight. Because they wanted to steal it. And if he'd give them the information, my dad being nobody, he had no protection, they could just say, well, they manufactured it, they invented it. He used to play mind games with people. He used to have different bits of ingredients laid around, but it wouldn't be the proper stuff because he didn't trust anyone. So someone that doesn't trust potential investors, it's not great for them to kind of be able to trust him either, is it? Yeah. I, that trust was a huge stumbling block then. He wanted it to help people, but he wanted the control as well. I think he was out of his depth, largely because he had something there that was, that um, could easily have been big, very, very big. He was being very cautious about what happens when you actually publish patents. If I had gone that route, then uh, the next thing is it's published and for the appropriate fee anybody in the world can buy the uh, copy of the patent and the unscrupulous ones would try and copy it and imitate it and it has to be fully set out. It isn't something where you just sketch it, it's got to be fully set out and uh, then anybody with an average intelligence would be able to reproduce. Inventing it is a great thing, but it's not worth anything in its own right. Invention is not, doesn't have a pound sign attached to it. Real wealth comes about when you change people's lives. You either protect them and they are willing to pay for that protection, or you enhance their life in other ways. And you're, you're, you're not doing that by inventing something, you're doing that by creating a product that does that thing. And it's a skill set you know, of the business person. It's, and I think that um, we shouldn't underestimate that unless you have both the invention and that ability to turn it into a business, you, you won't create wealth. We have materials library with thousands of these samples in it. Most of them are not out there. They just haven't found their place in the world yet. Uh, we have, you know, shape memory alloys, we have magnetic liquids, and, and they've all been invented by people and they haven't quite made it into our lives because they don't quite actually do something we all need, want and want to pay for. But they're not to say they won't in the future. His end goal was to in fact get something like 10 billion pounds dumped on, um, on him so that he could just do it. No one's going to do that. I thought you said billion. I <laughs> did, oh, I did. did. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, right. you wanted 10 billion. Well, yes. I mean, I've, I've heard numbers of, of, of that mentioned. Morris's stubborn nature is perhaps best illustrated in this extraordinary clip from the 1994 BBC documentary. Here, his daughter, Carrie, responds to an off-the-cuff question from the programme makers. What will you do if it was your invention? I would try and sell it out to the best deal that I could get for it. 
by contacting all the people that have been interested in Starlight up to now. And how would you do that? How would you actually deal with them? Being, being, being that you've been in all these high-powered meetings and see all these executives, how they try and deal with it? Well, I would have to make sure that I was paid for it fully first before they got anything. Before they got any formulation? Before they got any formulation. Money through the bank? Money through the bank. All signed up and all belonging to the family? Yeah, as long as we had the money, money in our hands, yes. Yeah, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? What would you do with two, two million pounds? Do you, don't you think you've undersold it? Well, it would be better than nothing. Yeah, but not, not as good as ten. <laughs> well, you haven't got ten yet. He was a very controlling, argumentative person. But that's who he is, and I think if he wasn't the eccentric person, he wouldn't have invented it. He, he, was, he was the showman, and I think that is a very important part of any business that you try and grow, is you invent something, and then you have to, you have to get people on board. Like, all these investors, they have many different ways to spend their money, and you have to convince them that yours, your material is going to be the best way to spend the money. And you need bravado, you need a demo, and he had them. It's so brilliant, his egg demo is like, Surely it's the best demo ever from a new material. <laughs> I can't think of a better one. So, so he had these, he invented something, he had that mind, he had the ability to, to show it off and get people really excited about it. I just think he didn't have the business head and that's, you know, to have all those in one person, that usually doesn't happen. <laughs>